Today in this video we are going to study about liver or turnpike mechanism in salvia. So salvia of a sinalis, it is also known as sage plant. So in this salvia there is pollination by insects like that of honeybees. Okay. So how there is that liver mechanism or turnpike mechanism? All of you know about liver. Liver means what? It is a rigid rod like structure which is uh, placed on fulcrum. Suppose this one is rod, rod like structure and here there is a huge load or huge stone is there, heavy load is there and such a rigid rod it is placed on fulcrum and it is used to move such a heavy loads. When we apply pressure here then it helps us to move such a heavy loads, isn't it? That is liver. So here that kind of mechanism takes place in this liver mechanism or turnpike mechanism. So in salvia, this flower is with bilit corolla or bilabiate corolla, bilit corolla or bilabiate corolla. So bilabiate corolla means what? So there are two leaf-like structures. Okay. So here this is one. And this one is another. So four petals are fused together to form this one leaf-like structure of corbett. And one remaining petal is present here. So there is a bilip corolla, bilibit corolla in salvia. Okay. And here there are two stamens and two carpels are there. That means bicarpillary dimusium is there. So two ovaries are fused here. Okay. So this one is Carpel. Actually, bicarpillary gynosium is there. Bicarpillary and syncarpus gynosium is there. This one is style. This one is ovary. Here, yeah, this is top of flower. Then this one is calyx. That means sepals. This is top of flower. Top of flower. That means pedicel, isn't it? So this is pedicel. This one is sepal. And this is corolla, which is bilip corolla, ovary style, and this is stigma here. This one is stigma. Now, in this flower, there are two stamens. Here I have drawn only one. So there are two stamens, and both stamens will have same structure, no doubt at all. So, in case of this stamen, there is one anther and one filament, isn't it? So normally one. Anther shows two anther lobes, dichecous anther. Two thickers that means two lobes are there. So here this is one lobe and this one is another lobe. Two lobes are attached together by this structure, sterile structure called connective. So this one is here connective and this one is filament. So this is normal structure of stem. But in case of salvia, this connective grows very rapidly connective grows very uh, rapidly. So here what happens here this one is filament. This one is filament of stomach and as connective grows very rapidly like this connective grows very rapidly and here there will be small filament and one One anther lobe is present here. Another anther lobe will be present here. Okay. So, this is one anther lobe. This one is another anther lobe. So, this upper one anther lobe, it is fertile. Fertile means it can produce pollen grains. Okay. So, fertile anther lobe means this one is fertile. Means it can produce pollen grains. And this one is sterile anther lobe. This is sterile anther lobe. This is fertile anther lobe. Okay, so here two stamens are there. Here I have drawn only one for your understanding purpose. So this is one stamen having this filament attached with petal. It is epipetalous. That means filament is attached with petal. And this is bifurcated connective. This is bifurcated connective. This is fertile anther lobe. This one is here fertile. This is fertile anther lobe. This one is sterile anther lobe. This is sterile anther lobe. Okay. So here 
there is protoandry condition protoandry protoandry means what there is protoandry condition means proto means first protoandry means androecium will mature first protoandry means what androecium will mature first and gynoecium will mature afterwards so that is known as protoandry so here you can see in this flower when this androecium is mature at that time gynoecium is not yet mature it will be immature only okay so here androecium will mature first and gynoecium will mature afterwards so self pollination is not possible here at all okay self pollination is not possible because here when androecium is mature gynoecium is immature so self pollination is not possible so how that cross pollination takes place so it takes place with the help of insects like bees and in this flower there is nectariferous gland <coughs> that means nectar secreting gland is there present at the base of this violet corolla so at the base of violet corolla suppose here somewhere that nectariferous gland is present nectar secreting gland is present so when insect will enter in flower that insect will search for nectar isn't it so here flowers are bright colored no doubt so insect get attracted towards such a flower and when insect will enter in flower it will search for nectar so when it will try to come inside flower suppose this one is insect <coughs> suppose this one is insect so when insect enters in flower and it will search for nectar so at that time when the insect tries to come inside when it exerts some pressure on this sterile lobe it exerts pressure on this sterile lobe of anther and what happens this fertile lobe it bends down when this sterile lobe is pushed when pressure is exerted on this sterile lobe by this insect it exerts some pressure on this sterile lobe and fertile lobe will bend down it will touch to back of insect like this okay it will touch to back of insect like this and pollen grains attaches to back of insect because here androecium is mature isn't it so pollen grain attaches with back of insect so here at this moment gynoecium is immature isn't it so this nectar will sorry insect will come inside it will take nectar then it will come out of flower when such a insect will visit another flower when such a insect will visit another flower <coughs> having fertile stigma having fertile stigma that means when carpel is mature so at that time when such a insect enters in flower then stigma comes in contact with this insect stigma touches to back of insect and pollination takes place here stigma touches to back of insect and pollination takes place so in this way there is a cross pollination in cell via okay or in sage plant so this is about liver or turnpike mechanism of cell via next one ornithophily that is pollination by birds pollination by birds ornis means bird ornithophily that is pollination by birds now birds which are small in size and having longer beak are involved in such a ornithophily for example hummingbird sunbird Hummingbird is smallest bird in world. 
then sunbird and birds like bulbul so such a birds are involved in pollination okay so now next what are adaptations for ornithophily flowers are brightly colored without fragrance flowers flowers are brightly colored having bluish or purple color so flowers are brightly colored without fragrance because birds have poor sense of smell so that is why flowers are brightly colored but these are without fragrance then such a plants produce copious nectar or abundant ample nectar ample nectar is produced by such a flowers which is used as drink by birds so ample nectar is produced flowers are light brightly colored without fragrance ample nectar is produced and flowers with tubular corolla flowers with tubular tube like corolla so why flowers are with tubular corolla so that bird can insert its beak inside that flower so that is why flower with tubular corolla so flowers are brightly colored these are without fragrance because birds have poor sense of smell there is ample nectar so this nectar is ample nectar lot of nectar is produced which is used as drink by bird and flower with tubular corolla and how are pollen grains pollen grains are spiny and sticky spiny and sticky so why these are spiny and sticky so when bird will insert its beak in corolla the large number of pollen grain attaches with beak and when such a bird will visit another flower again bird will insert its beak in that flower and at that time there will be cross pollination so thus these are adaptations for ornithophily and such ornithophily it takes place in plants like bombyx then bombyx means silk cotton then it also occurs in bottle brush then in butia butia that means pulse so bombyx bottle brush butia in such plants there is pollination by birds and next type of pollination is chiropterophily that is pollination by bats that is pollination by bats here flowers are with dull color and with strong fragrance and with strong fragrance rotting fruit like odor is there which will attract bat so flowers are with dull color with strong fragrance rotting fruit like odor which will attract bats and copious nectar lot of nectar is produced copious that means lot of nectar is produced in flowers and there are large number of edible pollen grains
large number of edible pollen grains are produced by such a flower so when bat will visit flower then it will have such a copious nectar and it will get large number of pollen grains to eat then floral parts are strong enough floral parts are strong enough so bat can hold on that flower so floral parts are strong and all these flowers will be night blooming flowers because bat is a nocturnal animal isn't it so thus these are all adaptations for paraphyllophily flowers are very dark color with strong fragrance rotting fruit like odor then produce copious nectar then large number of edible pollen grains are produced so when bat will visit such a flower it will get copious nectar and it will get large number of pollen grains to eat and floral parts are strong enough so that when bat will hold on flower it will not fall down so that's these are adaptations for chiropterophily for example tigidia that means sausage tree sausage tree means fruits of this plant having shape like sausage okay so that's why tigidia and anthocephalus anthocephalus that means kadamba anthocephalus kadamba so in gigelia then anthocephalus there is chiropterophily so this is about different types of pollination